attention on how a board is doing as how a CEO is doing because as we've seen unfortunately also out of Silicon Valley recently boards can do a lot of damage I think the most important thing on a board is to have diverse representation and by d diverse I mean not just women men but people who come from big companies as well as small companies uh, the Facebook board has, of course, predictably been a lot of investors up until this point in time. And so I would expect that over time they will diversify okay. their board across a number of dimensions. Being that you were the head of HP for quite a while, um, the 8 to 10 percent layoffs that may be coming at that company, what do you make of it? What's your reaction to it? Is it the appropriate move for Meg Whitman to make? Well, as I understand it, right now it's speculation. Uh, the, the company hasn't commented on it. I guess I would just our, say our David it's... David Faber has confirmed that that's going to happen, ah, Carly. Okay, and, all right. And the well, feeling then... is that they want to reallocate assets to those areas where they feel there's more growth opportunities right. for the company that have been starved at this point. Do you agree? Well, I certainly think that there are areas in the company that have been starved, and those include R&D and marketing. Uh, 8 to 10 percent is a very large number, and so I guess I would have to see a little bit more detail about where that's coming from, uh, but it just strikes me as a big number and uh, obviously, however, a bold and serious move. Something that was needed, I guess, uh, on the part of Meg Whitman at this point. Well, look, I personally think that HP has majored on cost cutting for way too long. They've majored on cost cutting for the last five or six years, and I think that's why you see so much underinvestment in R&D and new product development and marketing. Right. On the other hand, I don't know where the people are right now, and so it may be necessary for those magnitude of cuts in order to find the money to reinvest. Very good. Thank you all. I don't know who's staying or leaving, but I hope you're all staying because we got a lot yeah. more to come here. For those of you who cannot get enough of this Facebook IPO, we have your solution coming up here. You can check out our CBC.com Facebook page where you can get up to the minute information about the most anticipated tech IPO since Google. Go to Facebook.CNBC.com. A lot of individual investors clamoring for a piece of Facebook's hot IPO. But with it. But we asked the question, would they be serving as stooges by funding the insiders cashing out with the instant profits? A reality check and more comedy I as we continue. I wondered where you were going with that. I wasn't sure. And later, <laughs> what did the heads of some of the oldest U.S. companies think about the Facebook hoopla? We'll have the heads of the New York Stock Exchange and UPS, a 100-year-old company, give us their take on Facebook's lofty valuation. Stay tuned for that coming up. Welcome back to Closing Bell. I'm Kayla Tausch. We've got a little bit more on Facebook. Just getting word from the NASDAQ that Facebook shares will be cleared for trading at 11 a.m. There was some speculation about that window between 1040 and 11 a.m. tomorrow, but NASDAQ releasing a statement saying it will be 11 a.m. Remember that Mark Zuckerberg and his team at Facebook will be ringing the bell remotely at 930 a.m. Eastern, 630 a.m. Pacific time from the Menlo Park headquarters. We'll have Carl Quintanilla there live. Bill? All right, Kayla, thank you. Meantime, with all the hype and pre-pro buzz, do you think Facebook can actually live up to its sky-high valuation? We asked you, and you responded. Here's one from Bill Sirocco. He tweeted, no way Facebook is worth 30 to 40 times next year's earnings when Apple trades at 10 times this year's earnings. Chris Johnston also cast a doubt. He told us anyone who buys after the open will lose money. It'll be lower in six months and one year. And the negativity doesn't stop there. Mark Harker wrote in that Facebook is a fad that will burn out soon. And we thank you for those responses. And we continue to ask you to tweet them at CNBC Closing Bell. I'm just bringing Tom Bellis in here, who's a short shareholder. You're, you're, you're twitching here as you see here some of that. What, is that. what do you think of that as you get ready to own shares in the biggest internet IPO tomorrow? Listen, we're very excited. I think this is just the tip of the iceberg for a company, you know, of Facebook. I mean, remember, Facebook is not just a company anymore. You know, it's been a way of life, almost a billion people that can identify themselves all across the world. Mm -hmm. And now with 13 or $14 billion, 
else in additional cash in their war chest. Look what he's done with $10 billion. Like I said before, he's created a $100 billion company. I think over the next three or four years, this could be probably one of the biggest technology companies in the market. Okay. Well, you've obviously put your money where your mouth is and your beliefs on that. That's for that's sure. True. Some of Facebook's biggest investors are cashing out, though we point out, while ordinary investors are trying to get a piece of this extra hot IPO. Some of those selling as much as half their stakes. Goldman Sachs, Tiger Global, and Facebook director Peter Thiel, one of the original VCs on this deal. So are average investors going to get a bad deal on this? I think that's the question. We're going to find out whether or not it's simply the insiders who are going to build up a big fortune. Let's ask our guests. Anupam Pallet of Greencrest Capital, also Rory Mayer of Capstone Investments, and Jeff Cox as well. And our other guest, Tom, is with us as well. So, Anupam, what do you make of the deal at this point, and what are your longer-term prospects for the company? So we believe at the current valuation that we're talking about, $38 a share, we do believe is overvalued at these levels. So at $105 billion at the high end, uh, we do think it's overvalued. We do believe the company can grow into a broader valuation, $100, $150 billion over time. We think it's overvalued right now. We were concerned about two things. First of all, they're growing a lot outside of North America, but most of their revenue comes from North America and Western Europe. Okay. The second thing is more and more users are going mobile right now, and they're having trouble monetizing mobile. Very quickly, what would be a better price for you? Our target valuation is 75 to $85 billion. Okay. Rory, what do you think? Uh, I would agree. I mean, I think some of the recent trends I've been seeing uh, makes me think that a fair valuation is about 38 bucks, and, and I think the stock will do well tomorrow. So those who start getting into it after it starts trading, I, I think they're getting into a fairly expensive stock. Okay, Jeff Cox, uh, this change means more than half of the offering will come from current shareholders. Uh, I mean, 57%, that's, if memory serves, that's double what it was for Google, for example. Are we making too much of that at this point? Well, I think the big thing you have to look at here, Bill, and what I'm focused on the most, is how does this affect the overall market? Now, and, and, I, and then I think that will in turn determine how it's going to affect Facebook. This is what the market's been waiting for. I wrote over a month ago that we were going to see sell in May, and we have seen sell in May, and that the firewall in front of sell in May was going to be Facebook. This is what the market needs right now. It needs that momentum push, and I think that's what Facebook is going to do more than anything for this market. Are, are the average people who, could, who go in tomorrow and try to trade this, try, try to buy this off the open? Are, are they going to get a bad value? That's very possible. But I think this is a momentum-driven market, and this is going to provide an important boost of momentum to the stock market. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Some of you are staying, some of you are not. But we appreciate your insights on what has been it is a very newsy uh, story right here. What advice do a pair of seasoned executives have for Facebook's co-founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg? The top brass from the New York Stock Exchange right here. And UPS, a 100-year-old company, rang the closing bell today. They weigh in on that coming up after the break. And a bit later on closing bell, is a bet on Facebook really a bet on Mr. Zuckerberg? And if you think of it that way, do you want to take that bet? You're watching CNBC. We are first in business worldwide. Now, back to Bill and Sue at the New York Stock Exchange. So let's see. We got uh, world's largest social network. Check. Largest internet IPO ever. Check. Second youngest self-made billionaire. Check. Youngest CEO of a Fortune 1000 wow. company to go public. Yes, check. The list could go on and on for Mark Zuckerberg's resume, leading many to ask, does he have too much power as CEO of Facebook? So when Facebook does go public tomorrow at a ripe year, 28 year old, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg becomes the leader of a company that is valued at an estimated $104 billion. Too much to handle, perhaps, or not. Still with us is Tom Bellises. He's with John Thomas Financial and Josh Brown from Fusion Analytics. Also joining the conversation is Steve Weinstein from ITG Investment Research. Tom, I'll start with you. Sure. You know, too I, much too for much him power? to handle or not? Not at all. I think uh, one main reason why the company is where it's at is because of Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, if you take a look at Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, you know, they've built huge companies because they were in control. They were the visionaries. They were the commanders in chief of their vision. And that's why these companies got to that point. I, I, and Josh, I know you agree, but it's one thing to run a company out of your <laughs> dorm at Harvard with a, a handful of uh, other students and programmers. It's another thing to run a $100 billion company with millions of shareholders looking over your shoulder, don't you think? 
of, of course, but let's, I mean, let's be realistic. Who else do you want? Do you want a baby boomer? Do you want to bring in Carol Barts? Well, or even, the Steve Google, Bomber? even the Google guys had to bring in a manager to run the company, and let's and not it didn't forget go, for And it didn't go very well. They ended well, up I don't know. Having I thought to, it went uh, pretty well for a while. They, they ended up having to come back and retake the reins. I think anyone that wants anyone but Zuckerberg here would be crazy. Look, this guy has done almost nothing wrong. Are you I saying Eric Schmidt didn't do a good job at Google? <laughs> Eric Schmidt did a fine job, but at the end of the day, the founders had to come back and take the reins. Same thing with Apple, where the visionary gets forced out, they try to bring in perfect professional management, and then they need jobs back. I think you want Zuckerberg here. I think the valuation is a vote of yes on Steve? the fact that this is the guy. Steve, what do you think? I think certainly in the near term, it's a positive to have him there. I think when you look at tech or really dynamic industries, a founder-led company is, is going to do better because really only the founder can, can push the vision, uh, it really only feels confident to make the real bold uh, decisions such as going out and spending a billion dollars on Instagram. You know, professional managers don't make those sorts of decisions. They, they tend to just try and manage away the risk versus make, making the big steps. So I think for the near term, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is definitely the guy to be running the company. Okay, and, Tom, we have you know, 30... Is he ready? Well, success, you know, look at the success so far. Okay, Tom, we have 30 seconds. What do you, as a, as a holder of the stock, what do you want to see from Mr. Zuckerberg? What do you want to see in terms of a board? You know, I think the board, one great thing about Mark, I mean, he's identified a great team, and he's brought that team on board to help him get to where he is. I think he should just continue the path, not reinvent the wheel, just utilize that money to benefit shareholders, and I think that's what he's going to do. All right. All right. Gentlemen, thank you. That's a, a topic that I'm sure we'll be discussing as the weeks and months come along here. As we continue on the special edition of Closing Bell, lawmakers want to keep Americans who leave the country with their money and not their citizenship out of the U.S. A case in